I have started shopping around for the Christmas episodes for for the attire and the. Oh my, my, yeah. Uh, I'm. This this is not cutting it. What you know the the video game. Eventually, like I've mentioned before, I've I've already taken down measurements. There's going to be a backdrop. This is, I'm going to jazz it up a bit. It needs to be. None of this screams horror. Um, there's a few horror games. It's mouthwash. That's horrifying. I guess. Um, the, old, the old horror mouthwash. Oh. Uh, Anti Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what a callback to ten minutes ago. <laughs> um. So I've I've been I've done a little I've done a little shopping and when I say shopping I mean I've spent a good sum of about eleven pounds because I'm broke so um, I've got some jazzy bits coming eleven pounds worth of jazzy bits <laughs> <laughs> I like it <laughs> title of my autobiography um, <laughs> I unfortunately I have not been able to find horror Christmas jumper that i really like then they're really not that good no i mean i know we're, we're talking about that classic sort of like the horrible yeah. christmas yeah yeah yeah. and yeah i don't like the style of them anyway no and i never had a christmas jumper like that either growing up so it's not like a it's not no. even like a fun callback thing for me because it's just not something that existed it really became um, a gimmick over the years didn't it the christmas yeah. jumper where i think it was probably from the late 2000s to two 2010s when pop culture was you know the big thing the 2010s you know marvel star wars all that stuff and it was just mm -hmm. slap it on a christmas jumper yeah i mean there's there's a I'm, I'm just looking out and on emp there is a slayer christmas jumper um for 55.99 oh that's too much for one that time of the year ridiculous isn't it i mean some of the other what the cheaper ones and, and more horror related ones I'm seeing are 20 quid. And even then I'm kind of thinking it's, think it's only I, for... <laughs> no, I bought my, I bought a Homer Simpson one, which is actually, it's comfortable. It's not actually that cheesy. It's just kind of fun looking. Mm -hmm. it, the Homer design actually looks great. It's not like pixelated. I got it from Tesco a couple of years ago for, I think 15 quid. It yeah, did. Right. It was nice for a little work yeah. do. And it's in the, it's in the bottom drawer comes out at christmas every comes know. out at christmas yeah i don't know maybe <clears throat> 20 quid is but 20 there's like 26 quid 20 yeah i'm not i don't want to pay more than 20 quid for it so i've i've gone a different route for our christmas okay. strips i've not gone christmas jumper i've gone some sort of christmas attire mixed with horror attire okay i've got a nice concoction coming up here I, I, i'm guessing you're going to keep things under wraps until Yes. until the time you don't want to give yes. it away okay i'm yes. intrigued yes yes I'm in, yes I'm intrigued. yes 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 looking forward to it it's gonna look awful <laughs> and that's what that's the goal <laughs> yeah that is the goal oh welcome back to lair dread i'm gonna try that again I, now i'm gonna try this properly yeah go on you can probably correct me welcome thy fellow ear listeners to thy dreadcast <laughs> podcast here on thou thy thy uh, day of days i'm not very good at talking old timey we're, we're trying to go i'm not very good Puritan. at it yeah yeah how, how, you i feel like you're pretty you're, how would you do that how what would be the right words to uh it's something like um good morrow fellas Listen well to our goodly podcast. It's like Ralph Innocent's in the room with us, folks. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's like Finchie's in the room. <laughs> I was like default. I could just hear my accent kind of going sort of West Country, or it felt like that I was it was going that way. As that in that sort of yeah, if anything of that period, Puritan yeah, language, it's... It, it starts to go a little bit West Country. It's... Every West Country listeners going, no, it wasn't Adam. But never mind. I know. I know what I mean. Oh, they don't have the internet. It's fine. They don't have the internet <laughs> over there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Still listening on the older uh, our wireless down there. So um, <laughs> yes, welcome back to the Dreadcast, folks. Another it's another folklore 
folktale special this week after yeah. last week's kill list episode um yes welcome back i'm tom and this is the lovely aiden hello and um oh, hello 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 out there out there good in morrow. internet good morrow there's there's one yeah the, 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 the thing with that the old time what is it what, what, what would you is it puritan like old english is it what's it's the word to describe english. Is it folk, folk um, english is it, is it I mean, is it? What, there is a Middle English, but I'm not entirely sure when Middle English comes in. We're talking um, early 1600s here, sort of the accent. Yeah, okay. Middle English is the form of the English language from the Norman Con mm. Conquest of 1066 to the late 15th century. So we're just after that. This is sort of 16th, 17th yeah. century. Um, but I don't know if there's maybe a late Middle English. I'm not sure what comes after Middle English, but it's... Um, it's an older dialect of yeah. English. Well, this very confusing at times. If you're, I mean, I would. I'm going to speculate. Early modern, early it, modern English is what it's called, referred to I, as. I'm going to speculate and say if you're not of, I would say English descent, you may find this the film in question today a bit harder to understand because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, today's film, The Witch. Incredible, incredible film. Oh, the Witch. The the v the v Witch. <laughs> yes, Old English. I mean, in the, v the, fact, the fact that it is written as, the title of the movie is written as The the v Witch yeah. is um, exactly related to the the form of English at the time. Um, yes. And yeah, there wasn't. It's basically before the invention of the letter W, <laughs> Supposedly got the hands on it, yeah. Before the, before the invention of the letter W, it was it would be the double V. Um, yes, today's film so, yeah. is the Vavitch. Um, yeah, little I guess a little happy accident follow on from the kill list last week, last week's episode, which you can find um, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Podbean, or by searching the Dragcast. It was a good episode. Um, very intriguing film. I, I think we recommended. I mean, you know, you recommended it. Go check it out. Go check out our episode on it, and we'll pass content. Um, before I just, I, I don't think we have much really to get into. Before I, I don't have much to get into before we get into today's film. Do you? I have one thing. I have, I have one thing. one thing to mention. Um, I suspect it might even be the same thing. So you go first. Is it about a film that we'll probably discuss? on our 2023 wrap-up episode that's going to be our number one horror film of the year. Oh, um, no. Actually, ah! no, it's not about that. Well, okay. Um, well, you go first. You go first, then. Well, I was just going to mention the um, that we've had a little poster reveal for the third Terrifier movie. I was just going to talk a little yes. bit about that. Yes, I think we briefly mentioned the teaser last week, but yes. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Go, go, go. Um, so that comes out. Well, that, sh that should have had the. Uh, that should be out already, right? Oh, no, sorry. The... It's next year, isn't it? It's next year. Um, yeah. October 25th next year. Um, so we've got an, a lovely. I'm just talking specifically about that post that's been doing the rounds on social media at the minute, which is art, the clown. Beautiful buy a Christmas tree that is decorated with a bunch of faces. He's wearing the face of Santa Claus around his neck. Um, and yeah, the yeah. scout, the, the forehead part has been sort of been cut into a loop and that is yeah. what's, it's, it's great. <laughs> um, and he's, yeah, the, 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 the wall behind him is blood splattered. He's got his usual sort of big rictus grin. Um, brandishing an axe and yeah i am i'm hyped for more terrifier it's it's beautiful because it's it is a piece of art it's not a photo mm -hmm. that that's oh, a, yeah that's a painting that's a that's a basically a map painting there's a digital piece of art it's beautiful mm -hmm. um i mean the one i'm looking at annoyingly has a qr code at the bottom of it that kind of takes yes, you out <laughs> that's the one i'm looking at as well but um I love I love the simplicity. The thing about it that the logo is the same. It's just a big free. It's not like it's not like Terrifier Resurgence or Terrifier mm. Ascendance. You know those those words that always get put onto 
sequel films. Though Resident Evil is the worst offender yeah. for those, you know. <laughs> it's just terrify free because horror is afraid of numbers. The horror genre mm. is way afraid of numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I also like that he, you know it's Damien Leone's. Like he's he's become that big and popular now, and like this is his franchise. Yeah, this is his this film. Thing. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a there's also um, a little thirty second like trailer promo type of thing. Yes, that well. was the te- that was the teaser that was released. That. Yeah, with him sitting on the chair dressed up as Santa. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Um, is that actually gives me um what should we call it uh papa lazaru league of gentlemen uh, vibes i needed that league of gentlemen just to remind me then for a second because i'm yeah. <laughs> I, I, sorry i thought you just sneezed actually so <laughs> <laughs> um i don't believe the teaser is properly out though i, I just saw like cam footage of it mm. oh wait no is it out? that's terrifier free and uh that is huh, okay that's rick astley <laughs> never mind <laughs> <laughs> i've been done <laughs> i've been done live on the oh, screen there we go, there live we go. On record. There's, there's the next tiktok clip oh no <laughs> <laughs> horror host gets rick rolls <laughs> oh, it's bound to happen it's bound to happen one of these days but yes um i also really love how quiet the production of this film has been no leaks yeah no leaks no reveals i mean we assume sienna and her little brother are still in it it would carry on the story but we don't know that i mean it would would make sense for them to carry on the story because they built such a big narrative in the second film whereas the first film felt very standalone Mm -hmm. um and still some unanswered questions as well oh big time big time um but yeah I, i love that we don't know anything about it I, I I love and obviously I hate it because well, I want it now but I also love that we're going to be hopefully surprised and go in blind I um, think so I think so I think the only things I've seen about it are it's it's promised I think we uh, they're going to pull back a little bit on the humour that we had yeah. in the second yeah. one um, of which I wouldn't say there's a huge amount but uh it's it's no. maybe gonna go back to that sort of slightly more unsettling that the old cliche darker tone of the first mm. film. Um the, the humor's only really the humor only really comes about by the way art acts. His yeah. mannerisms, isn't it? Like him him mm. running back into the room with the bleach and the uh salt or whatever it was. Like that mm. that's quite funny in a horrific way. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. There's not really any comedy aspects of it, but I think they no. also need. Hopefully, they will uh, reduce the runtime as well, because two and a half hours was too long. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, and uh, but it's also they introduced the pale girl. You know, you've got the sword that Sienna's got. There, there are answers need. There are questions need to be answered. So, I like that he's gone a holiday um, pathway. He's gone down the holiday route. Christmas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. So, just that. So, that was the only thing, really. Just a little. Uh, just wanted to. Just wanted to mention that. Just, to, just have a little chat about Terrifier Three, because yeah, very much looking forward to that. Um, we're yeah. bound to get a little bit more news, I think, nearer the time. But oh, we will. With we you. will. Yeah, don't want, don't want too much. Quite happy to to go in blind with it. I remember. Um, actually, as I look back at it. We did a trailer breakdown for Terrifier 2. Um, So I wonder when... Let's have a look when that came out. Now it might give us an indication as to when we might get a Terrifier 3 trailer, like how close it was to... So trailer breakdowns. Let's have a look. Terrifier. So that that was a year ago. We did that... Do, do, do September. So yeah, we're probably looking late summer, summertime for maybe a proper Terrifier free trailer. I'd say we, they, were, they, I would have thought they'd probably release that teaser in the coming months. Yeah, because it was very, um, it was very select screenings. It was just Terrifier yeah, two screenings. Was. So in America, um, so yeah, 
Yeah, so hopefully. There's a, a little bit of uproar about the fact that it hints at children being, <laughs> being the victim as well. There's a lot of people crying about that. Go well, watch something else. Speaking of children being the victims, <laughs> I am not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to wait until our final episode of the year, which is the 2023 wrap up. But uh, I watched, and you've watched now, which I believe is my number one horror film of 2023, uh, When <laughs> Evil Lurks. Um, I cannot recommend this film more. Um, it's fantastic. And it just goes. <laughs> it just goes from the first minute um it's a nice take on a somewhat possession film it is spanish uh or argentinian so it is subbed um it's relentless it's bleak and very uh bleak. Very, very bleak very bleak um yeah i i, I don't want to say too much about it until we probably get into it but yeah highly recommend when evil lurks if you can find it i believe it's actually on shudder that's how i watched it i think it is yeah so that's how i watched it um, as well. so amazon amazon prime on the shudder channel through that um yeah uh seconded it is incredibly very bleak uh, um has vibes of uh oh you know what it's called tom it's the other one that you recommended to me and the name i forget speak Not no evil straight. Yes, speak no yeah. evil. Very, just, very much. You, you're, wait, sort of... you're waiting for that. Is it going to be okay? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that resolution of, oh, everything will work out. Somebody else, <laughs> some, you know what I mean? It'll, it'll be fine. It's, 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 you'll be upset. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, it's still good. It's still good. Mm. Dead, dead. Oh, it's still good. It's still... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Is there an end credit scene? Come on. No oh no. <laughs> no but yeah definitely a great watch and something like something doing something slightly different with both yeah. the possessions genre and um well we we saw somebody likening it to the zombie genre didn't we and while didn't entirely agree with the mm. the, the exact comment they made could see the comparison between the sort of like road movie side of a zombie film and it's got it's got elements of that in there's as well, portions so of it yeah 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 um yeah it, it does does something different um for your, your typical possession movie um in a in a unique way i liked it liked it a lot. I, always good to see something new would be very interested in seeing something something more from this this universe and hmm. this sort of new mythology that's been created you sir just did a, or another perfect segue to something to a, to a, another topic that you probably aren't even aware about that i was going to bring up probably not go on now what, what did you just say you said about how you'd like to see a bit more in this mythos this sort of a little world, bit you know? more from this mythology yes now one more thing just before we get into the vivich we had a uh, a great a great piece of um mail from the mailbag last week discussing we se sequels that are warranted whereas most mm -hmm. most of the time in horror they're unwarranted you don't need mm -hmm. them this one you this just one. said well, this would be yeah. a cool one to maybe get a bit more it, we don't need or like this film doesn't I don't need origins in, no I this film doesn't have an origins. origin this film no. just goes like we're in the middle of shit happening we're, we're bad yeah. times happening yeah. we don't need reasons why we don't we don't need it's like i always go back to like, the uh, the walking dead I don't need a reason why a zombie apocalypse is happening. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. No. We don't need a reason why this is happening. But it's let's go further. Yeah. Let's go further out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think you're right. This would be a good one to expand. Yeah, on. definitely. It doesn't need, doesn't need an origin. It doesn't need to be the same people. Um, no. Nope. But can just be a re revisit in this world five ten years maybe after the events of the original film to see how things you know what what's what's been yeah. the fallout from the the events of of the first film yeah i think it'd be great i mean we, we chatted a little bit didn't we about some potential plot lines um that we'd we'd like for it um don't, yeah. don't want to go into that without giving because it involves giving away the the plot line of the the original but yeah definitely in response to uh to coop's letter from the other week 
Um, yeah, without it sounding like a cop out, like oh, a film we watched in a week will be the answer, <laughs> but it actually kind of fits in a way. <laughs> it's it's just a happy coincidence. It is just a yeah, just a nice a nice little coincidence that yeah, we we both watched When Evil Lurks um, just after that, and and is that is a good fit for yeah uh, as an answer to that question. Definitely, um, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking on sort of other films and perhaps some more well known franchises. Well, that- it's a good question, but it's a hard question. It is a hard question. Because I think the the best way to look at it is the way you you answered it with Predator, where you've got this one sort of entity character that can fit into different... Mm. Rather than a sequel of the next day, the next day, the next day, like, say, the Saw films, or Friday, Friday yeah. the 13th, a lot of those sequels happen within the next day of each other at times. Mm. You know, whereas the Predator series can be this time this this time period this yeah. this planet this it, just drop it in here and there yeah somebody um i mentioned uh, that at work today uh, the other day i was talking to uh to one of the lads i was work uh, i work with about just about um sequels and things and generally anyway and i was talking about the predator and what mm. we were talking saying about you can you can just take the predator and drop him into a pick a time period, pick a culture, whatever you know. You want to see the predator fight some samurai, some ninjas. Yeah. Or we'll do a feudal Jap- uh, Japan entry. You want to see him fight some Vikings? Like we can we can do that. We can just pick up the predator and drop him into to wherever. Um, apparently, there is a, a little hint, and it's very subtle, but I think there's a little throwaway line in the first movie. The 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 demon, the you know the predator, hmm. comes when there's been a drought. Um, okay. And similarly, Predator Two takes place during a period during a heat wave in LA. There is a little bit of nuance. It's a slight Predator lore that suggests that the hunting season for the predators is during uh, heat waves and drought periods on earth hey. so because i mentioned like oh you could chuck him in with some vikings and he was like well you'd have to go to obviously it'd have to be sometime during a drought or a heat wave and i was like really what are you talking about it was like yeah 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 if you there's a reference to it in the first one there's a reference to it in predator 2 and it's like oh i didn't know that yeah i had I'd no have idea to, about that either. i'd have to re-watch it because i think it is just a little subtle throwaway line but yeah the predator, okay. the hunting season for the predator coincides with um, long periods of of drought and heat waves on Earth, apparently. Um, so if you're worse. rewatching, if you're rewatching Predator anytime soon, keep an eye out for that. It's gonna get worse for us in the f- future when the global warming kicks in. Then <laughs> we God, got predators. Gonna be, yeah, gonna be every, they're gonna be everywhere. <laughs> um. But yes, it was a good question, and I think we can we could probably we can probably come back to it for the future episodes. So. Just keep thinking think about so. it. It's a, it's a good running question mm-hmm. to keep thinking about. So yes, thanks again, Coop. And if you have a question that you want to send in, much like that amazing one by Coop, Coop about horror or anything about anything, what, what have you been up to this week? Send it in. Send us your diary in. Yeah, send and, it um, in. you can send it to the Dreadcast Podcast at gmail dot com. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Like I say, suggestions. For things for us to watch, things that tell us about things you've watched, things you like, things you don't like, um, everything and anything horror related. Um, you know that that mailbag is a can be a haven of horror for us. What do you think of that? I like it. So the beauty of today's episode means that I get to bring this back out again. Yay! The wonderful, wonderful 4K collector's edition of the Vavitch by Second Sight Films. This is why you um, pick this film, isn't it? Just so you can get. Well, I it's been on the shelf for a while. I um, and I haven't actually watched it since I got it. Uh, I've seen I've seen the film before I got it, but um, I haven't yeah. watched this edition. And I've just been like, I've been looking at it, going, yeah, I've been watching a lot of horrors lately. It's getting to that part of the year. Well, let's put this on. This would be great to check out. And um, 
it's an incredible collector's edition. Uh, I think I've shown it before. You get the usual postcards, which stay in their sealed packaging. They yeah, you never look out. at those. I never look at those either. It's like, oh, great, it comes with postcards. They're going to stay in the box and never be yeah. moved and put anywhere. <laughs> we get the uh, Ultra HD and Blu-ray copy. Obviously, watch the Ultra HD. And we get the beauty. This is very similar to the Texas Chainsaw collection edition that I've got. Uh, postcards, uh, all the editions, special features, and an amazing book, uh, which I'll put a lot of these pictures up um, throughout this episode, basically yeah. showing, for, in thing, for instance, uh, concept designs for the house, um, oh. costume designs, mm -hmm. um, because as we either get into now or we'll elaborate uh, later on in this episode, they went to town on production design for The Vich. Yeah everything like the house was professionally built um by people in the know of old puritan houses thatched roofs the costume mm -hmm. designers were down to a t everything was sourced perfectly um and yes they're all in here so i'll um i'll sprinkle a load of the designs there's also a load of backstories um in here to uh puritan times because apparently eggers is a big fan of the folklore yeah and loads of information of, on um sort of quote unquote true yeah it's about witches um th sprinkled throughout this movie like um that, that come from various folklore accounts and things so um Eggers, robert eggers this is robert eggers's debut film hell of a debut film it's um, massive and he in my mind is free for free he's one of the best modern film directors in my opinion i yeah. think he is completely free for free um what where would you rank the three if you had to and then and none of them are bad one bit they're all fantastic in my opinion so the his three are the the witch um the lighthouse and the northman right yeah yeah um i have still to see the lighthouse so i can't oh i think you did say yes okay yeah i still I still haven't got around to watching it um but <laughs> no point uh, ranking two then <laughs> i mean i, I think i think I, I I think the witch is definitely number one. Mm. Uh, definitely number one. I just I from what I've seen about the lighthouse, I I don't think it's going to overtake. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed with the Northman, to be quite honest. Okay, okay. I was expecting a lot more, so I've not got around to it yet. But when I do, I I think it's probably going to go witch lighthouse Northman for me. Witch lighthouse Northman. Looking forward to his not I'm looking forward to his next effort. Which yes. Is yes. Yeah. He he always stated that he always wants to do um, period pieces from different times. Never wants to do a modern film, modern set and film. Um, which I, I appreciate. I really like that. There's not enough of that. I don't think. Um, although I do really want to see the uh, ah, what was it? This is completely off topic. Something of Voyage of the Dementor. Um, a sort oh, of take Demeter. Yeah. It's the Dracula. Yeah, um, last so voyage of Demeter. Yeah, it's the ship about. It's the ship that carries Dracula over That's to um, Whitby, isn't it? Yeah, that look that looks cool. But I I really appreciate that he does period pieces. Um, the Lightning House is good. I would recommend it. It's very weird, very eerie. Yeah. Um, it only I can only see it working in black and white. It's one of yeah. those films that work in black and white. But, um. But yeah, uh, I think I think I agree. I think The Witch is his best film. Um, and as of watching it again last night for this recording, yeah, that's without doubt it's his best film. Um, when I, I remember when I first watched this, it's it's one of those things that was hard to get out of my head. Yeah. Finchy, it's Finchy from the office. It's Finchy. <laughs> yeah. And I like okay, I've got to take this film seriously now. Finchy is trying to do a 1600s Puritan <laughs> um old English accent and I I've got to really get immersed and not look as this he's doing like am amateur dramatics. No, he's it's not Finchy. It's, it's <laughs> Ralph innocent in innocent in innocent innocent innocent. I can't so, it. So for anybody yeah. not aware, Ralph Innocent, who plays William in yes. The Witch, is um, the 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 travelling rep in the bloody good rep. version of The Office. Chris bloody Finch, good. bloody good rep. Bloody good rep. Um, <laughs> who is, I can't remember the name of his 
American counterpart. Uh, Todd Packer is the is the is the Todd Packer character mm. in the original UK Office series. A character called Chris Finch. Yeah, Finchy. Uh, <sighs> yeah, quite, quite a brash, um, obnoxious. Uh, yeah. Like, Gobshot of a man, really. Um, he's also one of the Ironborn in Game of Thrones. Um, he was. So, him and Kate Dickey, who plays his wife Catherine, is also uh, Lady Lady Lysa. Lysa, is it in Game of Thrones? Yes, he's a Catherine's. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, Kate, 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 Caitlin. Sorry, yeah. not Catherine. She plays Catherine in this. She's Caitlin's That's sister fair. in Game of Thrones. Um, that's good right. part, so, good good casting, I think for her part, she plays the oh, yeah. she plays the very angry. Uh, I lost my words. There. Angry. Um, I know what you losing her mind, lo- losing her mind, sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy old woman of, part. Yeah, ecstatic. Yeah, er- erratic, not ecstatic. <laughs> er- erratic, ecstatic. She plays ecstatic. ecstatic yeah, well. yeah. Um. Yeah, sort of mentally, mentally exhausted at a breaking point. That sort of, um, which yeah, essentially is is a role in the witch. I think it's pretty fair to say she uh, she. Well, I mean, the opening of the film, she loses a child, doesn't she? Essentially, uh, or near the yeah. end of the film, the first one of the first big events of the movie is the their young. Baby yes. arms, Samuel going missing. As a family, being uh, mum, dad, uh, Thomason, the oldest daughter, the eldest daughter, played by Anya Taylor Joy. Did I get that right? Anya Joy Taylor, Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, it's Taylor Joy. Taylor Joy. I think it's one of her first movies, I believe, as well. Um, uh, her first, possibly. one of her big movies, and she's obviously now blown up, um, mm-hmm. big time. Uh, I, I, I like her. Enjoy her work. Um, Okay, it's it's like her it's her first major picture, yeah. Yeah. Um it is. so her playing Thomasin, uh the younger brother Caleb and two twins, Mercy and Jonas. Mercy and Jonas. Jonas. Yeah, who are very, very young, and then their newborn Samuel. They are basically um kicked out of their their settlement village. For uh, it, it's talked about in the opening scene. Is it? It's some dispute over religion. It's but yeah. It's basically so. So it, it's that sixteenth. I don't think we're ever given an exact date of when it takes place, but it's sometime sixteenth, no. seventeenth century. Yeah. that sort of the time of the Puritans. So the, and the Puritans were a, um, a, a religious, a Catholic religious sect who uh, were Protestant. Opposed, opposed to Catholics, but opposed to a lot of Protestants as well. They essentially they were very sort of militant, diehard oh, Catholic, yeah. and uh, a bunch of them left England for the New World because the Church of England in England wasn't religious enough for mm. them. Um, so, and a lot of a lot of the the colonies set up in the New World in in and around uh, New England and. Um, boston and those sorts of places um well yeah founded founded by puritans and then i believe it's almost a it's possibly a self-exile that william's family or william believes that the, the settlement that they're living in isn't religion it isn't religious enough part of his opening speech he basically says you know we, we crossed the vast ocean to escape this mm. uh you know like lackadaisical um worship and i'm sort of and we're seeing it again around the town so you know we're we're out of here so i I think it's kind of a i get the impression it's a little bit more of a self-exile rather than yeah they're they're told to leave that it's sort of like a we're going because you guys aren't holy enough so Um, speaking of holy enough like man they are hardcore. It's hardcore religious. This film, mm. like, it's wild. It's a wild yeah. way to live. It really is. Um, and it, it, religion, you believe whatever you want. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I personally, personally, I don't. But when you look at Puritan, like, like this sort of uh, hundreds of hundreds of years ago, it's it's this or nothing. Like th- this. Oh is, yeah. This is our life. 
And they, they are like hard wired believe that you know like we are creatures of sin you are if sin. you're not if you are not like praying on the daily the devil will get you yeah. and he will yeah. turn you to a path of like literally like you know if you if you take your eyes off the the light of the lord for half a second you are going down a road of sin and you will burn in hell it, it's Insane. like constant Make sure you are constantly at worship, at prayer, thinking about Jesus, thinking about how much God loves you, like being a good person. It's yeah, it's very, very like dogmatic, um, yeah. And and we see that like uh, evidence of that like all the way through the film. There's constant references of being creatures of sin and mm. like just just chanting the word sin and um and. Yeah, they're, they're sort of, but but also being human. I mean, I think we get like William that that one of the one of the central parts of uh, conflict is is this missing cup, this silver cup that goes. Yeah, missing, yeah. That that William has taken to sell to buy food because they the family is struggling, but keeps that hidden from his wife, and lets her you know accuse. The children, or you know, in particular, Thomasin, um, yeah, have taken it. Um, Caleb, the youngest son, he's going through some, you know, he's clearly having some sort of sinful, lustful thoughts. Well, there's um, not many women around, so um, you know, he's, ma he's making do with what he's got <laughs> in a, in a very, a very particular uh, way. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 essentially on the verge of lusting after his sister. Do the thing I like about don't take this the wrong way. The thing I like about that, let me finish the <laughs> sentence. Let me finish my sentence, is that it pays off with his interaction with the paranormal yeah. evil that's out in the woods. It actually does pay off. It's not mm -hmm. just therefore there's no women around, he's starting to get his horn on and but likes his sister. It, yeah. It's here, yeah, he's maybe in puberty, he's growing up, but it then pays off in a, mm. in a horrible way with the evil entity in the woods. Um, there is a reason for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's and, that, and I think that's the again, yeah, that's sort of the point is that there the, there's a lot of preaching about how they're creatures of sin and they need to remain good, but secretly yeah. a couple of them do have some obviously do, are human and do have some sin in them, and then that is sort of uh, exploited by the, uh, the 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 powers of evil and used used to their advantage to sort of punish them i guess yeah i guess it's a, i guess you'd call it a punishment they're the, their victims well they're victims throughout the whole film because the film is for the most part the deterioration of their settlement and their their minds and their lives like it all yeah. starts from yeah yeah i guess them being banished from their settlement but then really from when thomason is playing with samuel like she's doing peekaboo with him on the floor mm -hmm. and you know, the camera is pointed up that you've got an up upshot camera of thomason hands on the face peekaboo peekaboo looks out baby's gone and she's yeah. in an open field for a good hundred meter radius, and then there's woods in the distance, and she, there's no tracks, there's no, there's nothing. He's just gone. Yeah, disappears. It's so fantastic because this film doesn't rely on jump scares. It doesn't rely on monsters or gore and all, oh, no. all of that stuff. Oh, well, it relies no, it on well for the it, the, it's there, there, there subtly, are a few moments subtly, yeah, subtly around, but they're they're used well. They're few and far between. It's not yeah. The horror it's, comes from that creeping dread and just yeah the, the unease of it and yeah because we, like... we see the audience sees that there is something out there in the woods yes um, we're, we're told that there is and that you know witches are real and out there um but as far as the family are concerned it well they believe in witches they do yeah but it is more sort of superstition and there's no real proof of it they don't like I say they don't know for certain that there is a witch definitely out there is a witch out there in those woods um and i guess they never find out that there actually is either no they 
don't it's all speculation being is thomas and the witch where or, or is it the twins um it's all i mean it's, it's absolutely this is the twins. oh my god it's the twins like, yeah. from the second you see them they are like clearly the devil's children they are <laughs> clearly being played played by um black philip black um Herb. who is the resident yeah. black goat two-horned black goat two horn they all have two horns um <laughs> black goat um here on the cover actually he is. there he is the very, there he is the very picture of <sighs> the i was gonna wear my own holy goat t-shirt actually but the very picture yeah. of that sort of baphomet the 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 goat headed lord of evil it is, yeah it is that sort of exactly you know venom album cover but our um so our, our, our... The story is is very straightforward. Like it's um like we said, it's a Puritan family that start to deteriorate with their lifestyle, their minds, um, all because of the evils in the woods, and them sort of infighting because they don't believe what it's going on in the woods, but they believe it's something happening. Yeah, and that's that's kind it, of well, it. It's really. it's sort of a happening separate to them because yeah. they are un, un, unknowingly they are victims of like so so we talk about samuel disappearing the next shot is of samuel being ground up into in a yes in a, into baby paste and smeared all over bodies and broomsticks to create a flying potion and we see the witch fly off on her i a didn't broom. remember this the first time i saw it and we, I watched it last right. night. I didn't remember this scene at all. I thought the first instance you see the witch is when um, Caleb is Caleb goes to her. And me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't remember this scene. Like This is so early on in the film, and we're like, yeah. oh, here we go. Here we yeah, go. Here's no, the witch. We, we, we're told. The audience yeah. is told straight away. Like, yeah, yeah, there's a witch. 100% yeah. there's a witch. <laughs> That's the, called the, the witch. title is not a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> there is a witch. Yeah. Um, but but as far as the family are concerned, they they tell themselves that a wolf must have st stolen yeah. away with him. Um, How but they quick don't is know. that wolf? <laughs> I mean, they don't know any different though. They never they no. never see any. It's not until the the end really that there is they're exposed to any sort of overtly um, supernatural happening. And it's only really Thomas in that witnesses it unscathed. Uh, I think yes. Well, yes. Um, yeah, unscathed. Um, so for yeah, the most part, think it's oh, well, so the the evil entities in this film are obviously the witch slash mm -hmm. witches. There is plural. There is there is more than one. Yeah. We definitely there's a, see there's that. A coven, there's a coven of witches and the devil. I guess yes, Black Philip, who the who goat. Is, yeah, the we is, is essentially the devil. We don't see them acquire the goat because after they're banished from their settlement, they they're on a cart with all their possessions. I guess there's a empty house that they've got or he's built. It's not really alluded to how they just. No. settle down at this farmstead i i think we we've got to assume that a certain amount of time of time has passed time enough for him perhaps to have built that house himself because i think there is one very little quick scene of them camping in the woods uh, yeah and i don't think she had the baby the when they left when they no. left the settlement so, so there's the uh, there's amount of, uh, the, yeah amount an amount of time has passed and also we we find out later on when uh, William is talking to Caleb that they, they he's traded he's managed to trade this cup so yeah you know they we we never see them acquire the goat uh, Black Philip but we he's he's come in at some point they've they've acquired this goat um. And we don't need the origin stories behind it. And we don't. We don't it's need. Just, yeah, it's we just don't there. Need the it's just stories. there. It's, fine. it's just there. Um, the twins, yeah, the youngest members of the family. Sorry, so I was. I just go back to what I was going to say. So we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, we have. Uh, the the family being largely unaware uh, that there is actually witch. Uh, uh, there may be a witch or witches in the yeah. woods. Um, and it is about their sort of suit. Uh, that, well, the the pressures and stresses of them struggling because they are 
struggling for, for food and for, you know, money and life is, they're living a, a hard life out there. Um, and then that ultimately, you know, then the, the miss, uh, the, the child going missing uh, and the, the stress and the pain and the heartache of that. And then ultimately that sort of devolves and degrades into paranoia and accusations that, yeah. um, you know, and in fighting that one of, one of their own is responsible for it. Um, and while we as an audience know that to a certain, I mean, they're having those difficulties anyway, but to a certain extent, some of it is imposed by the, the coven. Yeah. And we know that as an audience, but it's not until right at the very end that the family are actually properly made aware that that's happened as well. Because yeah. Caleb goes missing, comes back, and he's just ill as far as they know. They don't, they're calling it that he's been witched, etc. Yeah. But they don't know that. He's just gone missing for a couple of days and he's come back with a fever and he's 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 ill as far as they're concerned. They talk yeah. about taking him to a doctor, don't they? So Yeah, which is a day's ride and he hasn't got the horse anymore because when mm -hmm. Caleb did go out uh, prior to be missing, um the horse they they lost the horse somehow. Uh, yeah, went off running. Um, there's a, a couple of times where they go out. So the first time is uh, William and Caleb, the, the dad, William and Caleb going out hunting, failing um, and spotting. Now, do you know the deal with the rabbit? They spot the a black yeah. rabbit just sitting out, and and they're about to. You know, they've got a, the muskets or the rifle. They fail in trying to shoot it uh, to capture it go back home and then later on in the film uh caleb then goes out hunting with um thomason on their horse and which is when mm. caleb goes missing um but i believe they spot the black rabbit again then yeah so, so do you know I, do you remember what the deal is with that i think it i think it's meant to be a hair um, oh a hair sorry yes yeah and again mm. um the hair is like quite common in um in witchcraft uh, as a as a symbol and i've taken it to be that that hair is one of the witches in animal form um, okay okay yeah and that's why william fails to shoot like the gun backfires into his eye because that's like the witch is just like well you're not shooting me and there's a little bit of what little, are you doing come on now. a little nose wriggling little, yeah um i dream of no, it's not I Dream of Genie, is it? It's the other one. It's very uh, much not. <laughs> but it's essentially <laughs> the same show. Um, um, yeah, there's a, so I think, so it's, uh, and this is what we're saying about um, Eggers putting a lot of, you know, quote-unquote witch facts into yeah. this film. Um, yeah, I think, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to find a quick answer, but I think if you search for sort of witchcraft and hair, you get a lot of <laughs> a lot of things. Um hairs is a symbolic of well, hair is a symbolic of rebirth and resurrection as well. Um but I think yeah, I think it's supposed to be one of the witches in disguise. Um but it's pretty it's also featured have uh, on um this box set. So at the, mm -hmm. at the front of the box set we've obviously got Thomason. But we also know, like I said, uh showed you we've got black I keep, calling, I keep on calling Black Pete. Black Pete is something completely different, which uh, we shouldn't ever get into. Yes, no, um, we shouldn't. No, <laughs> I think traditionally, in in some folklore, traditionally, witches have been able to turn into hares. Um, so the hare is is meant to be one of the witches of the common. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there, there we go. We've got, the, we've got the hare on the back there. We've also got the uh, raven, which we'll get into as well uh, in a bit. So and it, the the hair does crop up again a little bit later on, I believe, for, a, for like a third time. Um, I think it's in one of the small barns. Yeah, right. Yeah, it appears. Yeah, and I, I think that's it. I think we we know as um, again as we we know as the audience that there are actually witches out there in in the woods, mm. and we get the we know that this I, I think that's it we're supposed to think right we're supposed to know that this hair is one of the witches and the witch is keeping tabs on the family and will will be you know t essentially is targeting them they're just they're just completely unaware of it um and even when they do speak of witchcraft it's their own sort of um it's their own suspicions of it 
Yeah. Rather yeah. than mm. and belief in it, rather than them, them seeing evidence, it's just you know they'd that's what they'd make that association with. A lot of the time in the horror films, it's um, us, the audience, discovering at the same because discovering what's going on at the same time as the characters. Like mm. You're sort of in the you're sort of on that journey along with them. With this, it's like we know we kind of know what's going on, and they don't. Yeah. We're kind of yeah, no, yeah. There's, there's, you, it's over there. You, I can't tell you, it's over there. The witch is over there. Yeah, that's what's going on. It's not your daughter. Don't hurt her. Don't blame her for the cup. It was Finchy. He needed to get a good, uh, good report on this. His rep. This oh guy. He's always gonna be Finchy. I'm sorry. He's always gonna be Finchy. Bloody good rep. He voices a lot of adverts in the UK as well, doesn't he? He does a lot yeah. of uh, voiceover work. He's got the um, Dacia, Dacia money coming in. Um, <laughs> He was in the Northman as well. Is he in the Northman as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. He um towards the the final the third act um he's got that ship where they're they're sailing away and then Skarsgård jumps off the boat, swims to to watch it again. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, he's in it. I um, I say I know he's in Game of Thrones and yeah, um, yeah, but I think I think my mind does immediately go to Finchie. I must admit. Um. Did you? I don't know how you found when I mentioned earlier about the the accents, the 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 language, the way they they mm-hmm. talk in this film. Um, it's like it, it's so authentic, it's so well written that it is it is quite hard to follow at times. I find unless you're really into that yeah, sort of talk and language. I, I found because it's very it's very verbose, isn't it? It's very like a, a, over the top. There's a lot yes. of words where obviously modern speech would use far fewer to to get the same point across i find that you kind of get the gist of what they're saying rather than understand it fully if that makes sense so it's like you kind of know like uh, like this he's rambling on and oh, da, da, da. god thanks us for you know we thank god for another fine morning and da, 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 and yeah. you should be tending tending to your sisters or son of mine and uh, there's all of this and he kind of just go along with it. I, I find that I'm not necessarily listening to everything that's said. Yeah. But just picking out that odd, odd few words and getting, and yeah, getting getting to grips with with uh, with what's coming across. I actually um, like some of the some of the phrases. There's a there's a part where Thomason is being doubted at by one of the younger twins, Mercy. And then she fights back by basically like pretending she's a witch and trying to oh, scare yeah. Mercy, but Caleb's in the background basically shouting, "Tell, tell no fantasies! Tell, like, don't tell fantasy." Yeah. I, I really like that description of like, make like Thomas and making up lies in this this myth, this magical world that she's mm-hmm. a witch, but he's classing it as he's describing it as fantasies. Don't tell fantasies. Mm-hmm. Don't tell. Not, don't like. Don't don't joke around with her. Don't lie to her. Don't tell fantasies. I, I really like yeah. that. Like little bits like that. Interestingly, that's that scene where Thomas uh, uh, Thomasin is rattling off all that yeah. stuff about signing the book and dancing naked with the devil and all. All of that is like it's just basically a list of witchcraft, um, folklore, and myth. Just like just bombarded in that in that one paragraph about the, these are all <laughs> all of things that like supposedly witches did like kissing the devil's backside and 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 suckling from it letting him suckle from their teat and all this sort of stuff um, well it somewhat does happen throughout the film to when the end i mean we do it does it comes back and we see we see that those those things that as kids they or people they believe are things that witches do yeah yeah we yep. find that we do later on find that actually they're they're right. It's not just superstition. It's the it's, it is what witches do. There is a book that they need to sign, and yep. there is a lot of naked dancing around fires. Speaking of Caleb, I didn't really appreciate it the first time. I think he's a great child actor, uh, the little kid that plays mm. him. I think he, I really liked his character, um, and especially he had like a little, somewhat monologue at the end of his life, his character's life in the film, when he's, mm. he's in the bed and announcing that you know, it's 
all about Christ and going when to he heaven. When he sees God and kiss yeah, me with your yeah. mouth and yeah, and he's, he's rubbing his face and I can see your like your light shine upon me and all that. Yeah, sort of stuff. yeah, it's, yeah. That's really it is really powerful. Yeah, I, really I, like I, I like. I mean, I think all the cast are great and all the kids are great. Caleb is very good. I think the young twins are fantastic as well. Um, yes, for their age, I assume. I, I don't know how old they are. But... <laughs> no, I don't. Wow. But they do, like, essentially whenever they're on screen, you kind of just want to go, well, obviously they're, they, they, when, well, whenever they're on screen, they're talking about Black Phillip talking to them. Yep. Um, and how he's whispered them secrets and all of this sort of stuff. And on a, a first watch, it's like, well, they're kids. You know, yeah, yeah, of course they, they talk to the farm animals and the farm animals talk back to them because they're kids. If you're watching it for a second time, it's like, just get rid of those children now, <laughs> clearly. They are <laughs> they're, evil. They are evil. And in that scene with Caleb sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, feverish and, and, and chanting, they're, in, they're sort of pretending that Thomasin has bewitched them and they're rolling around on the floor. They, they pretend to forget the prayer, the words to yeah. the prayer. And then they're rolling around on the floor, screaming in agony. Well, I took that like, them. I took that as if um, the prayer was hurting them because the the mum and the dad, and then they start to do the prayer around Caleb, and then they're st it's like they're starting to be affected by the God, mm -hmm. the Lord's prayer, because they're yeah. they're in the devil's pocket. They're they're a part of it. It's see, I took it as being a little bit of it's a little bit of both. Yeah. The, they are affected by it because they have been conversing with Black Philip. Yeah. But they're also at the same time trying to stitch their sister up, possibly on his yeah. orders. Yes. So it, yes. it's like, you know, the devil makes work for idle hands. It's the devil's influence that he's making them like act up and accuse their sister. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, the devil sows dissent and chaos and that's his whole shtick, right? Um so yeah, it, it's like, it's not that, it, almost like there'd be a deleted scene where Black Phillips t tell, you know, telling them, not a, we don't definitely don't want this as an actual scene in the movie, but like off screen, Black Phillip has said, you know, if, if, if anybody makes you try and, if anybody wants you to pray, pretend that you've forgotten the words or pretend your sister's made you forget the words or something like that. <laughs> and it's essentially, it's that. And it's this sort of, yeah, this, um, sowing of sowing seeds of doubt and mistrust that are uh, i mean without the witches this film would have this family would have tore itself apart anyway oh god oh yeah yeah it, it was yeah that that's actually really interesting like the events were bound are gonna happen no matter mm. what i think mm-hmm um, yeah may, I maybe mean, if... maybe not so much with with black pete with black pete oh god with black philip <laughs> Forget I'm saying that, folks. Okay, Just call him so, BP. BP. Would B would B <laughs> <laughs> would BP have gored William at the end? If obviously if, they weren't, if there it was a bit of tussle, witches, if it wasn't the devil, if it was just a goat, if it was just a goat. Well, apparently, yes. Because have you read about the goat that they got to play Black Philip? Yeah, is it still alive and very? It's still alive vicious? and lives like. Yeah, it lives on yeah. a farm somewhere yeah. far away from anybody because it's an absolute <laughs> arsehole, apparently. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that that bit where he goes, uh, Ralph Innocent, is even scripted. I think the goal was just somebody took their eyes off him for a second and he, he got a chance to just go and be a knobhead. Film it, film it. Film it. <laughs> yeah. We'll get Ralph's first later on in a minute, but this is really good. Come on, act, um, Ralph. Come on. <laughs> I mean, probably not. Probably not. That was the sort of, you know, the the, the devil at work, I guess. But um, but yeah, like they, they'd already talked about sending Thomas in away. Yeah. Um, and but not just sending her away. I think when William says to her, like, um, you know, now now's your chance to tell me. I think it's not just a case of like sending her into exile. I think they're going to take her to the authorities, and I think we all know what that meant meant for you know women and girls accused of witchcraft at this time is damned if you do damned if you don't i think you know certainly as far as i mean it was it was burnings in new england 
Yeah. It was hang it was it was hanging in the in England. But even the sort of methods used to to determine innocence were, were fatal in a lot of cases or you know I mean I for one would blame Goody Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> you sir have earned a caramel card. Um <laughs> Yeah, and it, yeah, so there'd be a lot of torture involved and stuff like that. So even if you're even if you're eventually found to be innocent, you're probably going to have a few scars and a bit of PTSD to go along with it. It wasn't. Well, that's it. Uh, if you're pushed off the cliff, you will fall to your death, and we know you're yeah. you're innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're a witch, you will fly up, come back down, and be prosecuted <laughs> for being a witch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you know, we had the ducking school, and yeah, the the ducking stool and everything. Yeah, if you're a witch, you'll. If you're if you're a witch, you'll float. If you're innocent, you'll drown. In the, it's like, sorry, but we, we need didn't really to be sure. think that through, did they? <laughs> <laughs> um, we yeah, the, with Caleb, Caleb. Caleb's got quite a focal point in the mid part of this film, mm. uh, where he goes obviously the second part out into the woods and um, uh, the how, how do they split up the the dog. Their dog goes off chasing uh, the hare again. Meets yeah. his untimely demise. Uh, the horse gets spooked. The horse, the horse gets spooked. And Thomason falls tosses, off. Yeah, Thomason yeah. falls off and bangs the head, knocks himself out. Horse is then probably run off, done with, eaten, mauled, whatever by the witches. And Caleb keeps hunting through the woods and ends up finding uh, the witch from Hansel and Gretel's <laughs> little house, apparently. Yeah. Who looks like the woman from the Scottish Widow's adverts. Insurance, trying to sell me insurance, but this comes back. This comes back to him, like we said earlier. I guess going through puberty, getting the thoughts, the impure thoughts in his head, and the witch. I, I, I get the feeling the witch is disguising herself to it's like a, a, little... a very attractive lady. Well, I that, don't... Pull, that pulls him in because then she goes I'm not into the sure. kiss. I mean, she is a very beautiful lady. She's that a plays very beautiful that lady. Witch. She is a model. Uh, Madeline Sopadizian, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. She's Bulgarian, uh, Bulgarian lady. Um, yeah, yeah, because we get the the sort of like the the horror sting, don't we, with the hand being all, um, all horrible. There are, I think. Oh, is that her? Two... Hang on, are you sure? Uh, is it is it not that one? Because there are, there are there are four or five uh, women credited as being coven witches in this film yeah so um, madeline madeline so oh god sorry um so pa so pa des, desire desian uh coven witch and sarah stevens who i do recognize as the witch um, right. oh, no um, it is her it's her no it's mad it's madeline's the one with the the red cloak and the boobies out yeah definitely no no it's sarah stevens are you sure? Because yep, a Google image is saying different. I, you sir, need to get a new Google. I'm afraid. Okay, my, okay. my Google, my up to date Google shows Sarah Stevens. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. With the yes, boobies no, out. Right. I'm looking, yes. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Little Red Riding Hood. Yes. Um, um, it is. It is Sarah Stevens. So, but there are several other women. Madeline, uh, which one is she? I don't know. I don't What's know because the... the image Google image search shows the same witch. So unless there was yeah, you're right. Bo- it's weird body double stuff going on. Um, or she's potentially she's just one of the ones in the dark. Uh, in, you know, yeah, around the, around the fire scene. Um, well, it does say coven witch. So yeah. maybe part of the group at the end. Yeah. And we've probably got, I think if you look at the credits as well, you've got, uh, oh it? God, oh God, here we go again. Ba- Baf- Baf- Bathsheba. Bathsheba Garnet. Yeah. The witch. Um, She's the witch. Then there's Brandy Leary, who is Coven Witch 2. Then there is a Viv Moore, who is lead Coven Witch. Um, yeah. Our girl Madeline and Sarah Stevens, who is also the witch. Yeah. So it's it's difficult to say which one is which. Um, ah. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, can I, sorry. Can I... back, to, back to the point. Back to the point is that Caleb has this running with uh, 
a beautiful yes a beautiful witch in the woods who we're led to believe well she i mean she definitely kisses him um but we're we're led to believe she seduces him um and we get the the sting of the horror hand and he disappears right. yeah can i just one thing on caleb um if it, my my point right now is twofold uh number one point of view right now he has an incredible name harvey scrimshaw harvey scrimshaw is how name. amazing is that and also look at the glow up look at the glow up for our boy caleb here <laughs> i mean yeah fair enough that is no boy that is no boy anymore that's a man <laughs> that is a man that 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 witch made him a man. <laughs> she certainly did make him a man. He, he is, um, so, he, oh, he's in the school of good and evil. Me and uh, me and my girlfriend watched that not too long ago. I don't recognise him from that, but fair enough. So um, much of a man that he puked up an eyeball. Well, was it an eyeball? What? Um, it, what was it? I had to made a note of what it was. Yeah, he he does. He pukes up a. It's an apple. I believe it's an apple. Is that related back to when him and William were talking about um, he, he wanted he, well, the lie he was telling his mum while they were out hunting? Uh, they, they were planting an apple tree. They found an apple tree or planted an apple tree and wanted to bring her Something back nice like apples. And I think also as well is that the apple is like the symbol of sin, the Garden of Eden. And there's oh, some, of biblical, there's some biblical that. imagery going on there. We, we're, going, we're going deep oh. in. We've got levels, levels on this one. Oh um, my word! Yeah, I think it's because I I believe actually he he because he has a bit of a freak out at that point and starts chanting the word sin and then coughs up an apple, so I think it's uh, mm. yeah it's it's the recurring imagery of um, sin and good and evil and um, it represents that. I may be entirely wrong, and maybe I'm just trying to sound super super smart. I I mean. But I think we don't we, we don't normally do that here on the drag cast, but we we'll take it we'll take it whenever we can get it. We'll throw yeah. things out there, see if they stick. Um, that's and, what I'm saying for this. And and do you know what? If we're wrong, tell us in the comments or send us an email at the dreadcast podcast at gmail.com. Any way to get some interaction from human beings. <laughs> um <laughs> <And what? laughs> oh, we should just do these episodes and just be wrong the whole time. Yeah. So we get some sort of interaction, even if it's just bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> just make things up. We know it's yeah. wrong, but we do it just so somebody will comment. Um, speaking of knowing stuff, though, with this scene with Caleb, obviously Caleb. So Caleb returns. Um, actually, when he returns, is it at this point Thomason's been banished to the barn with the goats, or is she just out there? I think it's she's just she, out there putting the goats. She's just out there. Them. It's just before this. Yeah. yeah. Thomason returns. It's a really good imagery, I think. It's quite horrific imagery of him just out in the rain, naked, flailing about mm. on the, the fence. And his older sister just seeing this after them thinking he's missing, like Samuel was gone for good. Mm. Um, when they end up getting him in, uh, quote, unquote, bed um, on the floor of their house, um, mm. I... I mentioned this before that obviously with my little thumb injury, I'm getting a bit, I'm getting a bit squeamish in my elder age. Uh, but this is more so with real blood and my my own, my own injuries. Yeah, I can handle terror. I can I can handle <laughs> terrify. I'm so desensitized to most gore and things yeah. like this. When it's subtle, like cuts and nicks, I I find it quite hard oh, actually. Yeah. Now, what happened to Caleb in this? Do, do you know why they did this? So they have a pan next to his head and she nicks his temple. Oh, I think she, because he's got ghosts in his blood. Is that what it is? Is that what well, I, did? I think it's old timey medicine. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Bleeding. Um But that think... came out like a faucet. Like they turned oh, that yeah, on. Yeah. It just I can't do it, it's this temple and the wrist, the inside of the wrist. Right there. Yeah. I can't do it's it. It's a it's a gusher, isn't it? Um yeah so we get um he's bleeding so my notes my notes for this this point read thus hmm. caleb returns absolutely shagged out bleed him obviously <laughs> it's ghosts in the blood it's 
It's ghost and, blood. <laughs> and then the two kids talking to Black Philip again. Um, so yeah, I think it's that's so, because he had a fever. So I think one of the the old of timey remedies for a, a fever was that you. I mean the 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 old timey remedies for most things were either your blood's haunted, <laughs> or you've got too much blood, or you. The, your blood's in the wrong place or we we oh, need man. to just get some of your blood out of you a bit and you hopefully you'll feel better hey man pagan uh, puritan pagan, whatever it is these times are just wild yeah. i mean people people yeah some parts some parts of our normal modern day life are tough and frustrating and horrible this sucks <laughs> this is imagine uh, yeah, covid just gotta lie down. Get the bowl. Get the bowl. Get the knife and just nick the side of your head and get the COVID blood out of your system. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. yeah I these... had a bit of a cold as a kid. It won't be a spoonful of cow pole you'd get. Just bled a little bit into a into a absolute dish. wild times. So yeah, not for that, me. So not for does me. He... No, not for <laughs> no, me. I, I'll just have a couple of paracetamol. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm good. I'm all right actually. Yeah, I'm good. Bit of a nap, maybe <laughs> maybe some Lucas. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Um, after the coughing up of the uh, apple slash eyeball, um, Caleb is no more. So He's Samuel, not. Caleb is gone. But we get an absolutely. I think it's one of my favorite shots of the film, and it's the uh, it's William and Catherine burying caleb by the tree and we've got the forest we've got the cabin in, in the background and the forest yeah and that and it, it's <laughs> yeah it's just a really good it's like all kind of washed out because a lot of this film is sort of muted grays and yeah and i wanted browns. to talk about the lighting and especially the sound at some point but yeah could carry on with the, the, the scene in particular yes yeah, yeah. it is it's just uh, it's, it's that sort of muted color palette and there is smoke coming out the chimney, but there's no real movement to it, any of it, and it's all very still, and it's it's just a really nice shot. I just like it a lot as as a it, it it's just it's it encompasses all of it. I think it's that the the subject manager they're burying the uh, subject matter they're <sighs> burying the child. It's bleak and kind of cold looking, and it it just it re it's like it sums up the whole, the entire film in sort of one shot. I think for me. Yeah, I think, I, and also we get that quick cut as well to uh, Catherine laying in the grave with Caleb mm. as well, which is very bleak scenery to see that. Yeah. Like, she's well, already I mean, has her a... newborn son exactly. just stolen, and now this, and now kicked out of her son. settlement. Weird things are going on, and they've got no food. Their crops are dying. They just, yeah, it's, it just gets worse and worse for them. Yeah. And this um, is where, like, the cracks really start yeah. to, you know, yeah. it, it's that point. And the rest of the movie, the, those cracks just, like, steadily, quickly get wider and, and deeper And um, as we as we head into the, the final act. Really, um, from this point, it goes, doesn't it? Like, yeah, uh, it does. Is it also at this point where um, Thomason is milking their goat and she discovers the goat is bleeding internally? Uh, or it's, it's, it's corrupted, if you will. You it's know? it's just before this, so it's while it's between Caleb coming back and Caleb dying. Is we get the yeah. scene of the it, we get the the kids are talking to Black Philip and Thomasin's milking the goat next to yeah. them, and the the goat's uh, yeah the goat's milk is blood. Yeah, um, basically. Uh, then we have Caleb's death scene. Yeah, um, that includes the whole. Uh, the the younger two accusing Thomason of being a witch, uh, and then they all Thomason twists it, and then they all get locked. So after Caleb's death is when they all get locked in the shed with yes. Black Philip. Oh uh, yes, yes, it was in um, after Caleb's death. At actually, I, I, I it all revolves around Caleb's death. There's a scene I really liked, especially the camera work of is. I think it's before Caleb dies and they're in, they're on the first floor of their building, but there's just two camera angles where one is pointed at Catherine holding Caleb and then the other one is just pointed at just nothing in this room and just William just 
talking back and forth to Catherine. There's, mm. It's just very still, still shots. One, two, talking back and forth, talking about how it's a day's ride to the to taking him to the town or whatnot. <laughs> or doctor, not even yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. The, and the way the way they talk, it's there's there, there's kind of not much hope left in the way they're talking. He's he's very he feels very defeated. It feels like yeah. like I'll, I'll try it, but I really don't feel like it's going to do much for him. I think the other part of it as well is it's going to cost them every, the very little they have yeah. left to, to do it. It's really like we are like yeah. giving up everything to do this. He talks about getting um, some sort of fruit or food on the way. Is he, I don't know if he mentioned stealing it or whatnot, but um, oh, I'm not sure. I don't think he would. That would be a sin. Is, I think the plan is because the, one of the main issues or the, the is that their corn crop is, is rotten. Yeah. And which is is obviously the witch's influence, although yep. we never see that manifest, and we have skipped over it up to now. But yeah, it's mentioned several times that the corn crop is failing; the crop is is no good. And I think he's talking about sacri- uh, not sacrificing, salvaging what little sort of good corn there is, which it's into it's into that is very little. Um, yeah, and selling. Because I think Catherine says something like, "Who will buy our rotten corn?" Or nobody, nobody will buy this rotten corn, or something like that. So it, and it's pretty very, rotten. Very desperate. Very, very desperate. Yeah. Um, as you said, from here onwards, it's just it, it spirals out of control um, until there is only Thomason left. Um, there is. Well, in that we get the. So we've got the kids. We've got the, yeah. the Jacob and uh sorry, Jonas and, and Mercy, uh Thomasin and Black Philip all locked up, boarded up in the in the little barn shed. Or shack, goat shed or barn, it. yeah. Goat yeah. shed. I guess it is the goat shed, isn't it? Yeah. Um and we get the witch visit the, the witch actually physically visits them. We get boot, the the sort of footprints on the footsteps on the roof. And then the two youngest disturb the witch while she's feeding on the goat. Yeah. Um, now that is a that's a great like we we said earlier, there's not many jump scares in this film or hardly any. There's no monsters, but I feel like when you see you see the back of the witch cr- crouched mm-hmm. down sucking on the the teat of the goat, you shouldn't have seen the face. They cut to the face quickly. Mm-hmm. I think it should have just been a slight turn around and you see half of the witch's face and maybe yeah. like a, maybe like a smile like a horrific smile <laughs> and then and then you, you know less is more in times but it, it wasn't too much but i just feel like you didn't need as much there no. but also prior to this and at the same time we are dealing with Catherine's hallucinations in the bedroom yeah. um yeah. which are wild <laughs> so the wild ending is is visited by somebody that promises to give do we do we ever see it or she's just she's talking to somebody off camera who it's promises just, to um my, a hallucination of caleb we just see it being caleb holding caleb. samuel that's it she goes in for to the embrace to the hug um that's when we cut to outside in the goat shed with the shenanigans happening there once we get the the scare of the witch cackling and screaming it's a quick cut back to Catherine sat upright, breast out, and a raven pecking at her breast. Yeah, and her yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. delir she's just completely delirious. Mm-hmm. Um, but that and that shot only lasts for a good one and a half, two seconds, maybe. Oh, it's very quick. It's yeah, so it's very quick, quick, and cuts to black, and then we move on. Like, and we move it's a, on. it's it. What, what's good about that? It's um, it's like bang, 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 and then nothing. And you're left. The audience is left looking, thinking, "What the fuck? What just happened? What did I just see?" And the the the, the film is like, we, "We haven't got time to talk about this. We're moving on." Nope. No, we, wait, no, wait. What? No, I want to. What? Let's stop. Hang on. What no, just happened? Everything, what just everything happened moves here? Very quickly from this. Yeah. So straight after that, we get William waking up. He gets out of bed. In the act of getting out of bed, he pulls back the cover slightly, and we see that Catherine has blood through her. Nine, yeah, a little bit. Ground, yeah, um, at the at the sort of point of a breast. Um, he goes outside to see that the 
the boards covering the goat that he hammered over the goat shed door have been shattered, smashed open. Yep. All the animals <sighs> dead. And then, pow! Suddenly, Black Philip just like it comes out of nowhere, and it makes me jump every time because no, don't expect it's it. It's a but great I know, know that I expect it, and know full well when it, it's going to happen. But it always manages to just get slightly catch me unawares. Yeah, um, it's a great scare. Mm. And we get, uh, yeah, he, he gets, um, gets, yes, just gored. gored to death by the by the goat by Black Phil. Well, yeah, the first gore he gets, he's uh, he's taken the back and falls mm. by the um, the cut up logs, which he's doing throughout mm. the film. And I think he, I again because of the the wording and the the, the script and the, the text he uses, I can't remember exactly what he says, but it's something along the lines of probably realizing thou goat is evil. <laughs> you know, I think that's exactly what he says. I think he kind of gets that's it, that is word for word right there. <laughs> um, and then Black, Black Philip just finishes him off, and then he gets the, the covered in the logs. Um, mm -hmm. The twins are nowhere to be seen from this point on. No, they they have been uh, presumably they disturbed the witch feeding and the witch carted them off. Uh, but yeah, we we never see them again. No. Um, they have been they've been um snatched up which uh means? no there's a great term they've been uh disappeared they've been disappeared because <laughs> they're not there to be i mean in other let's say other horror films that that shot of uh behind william or william's point of view looking at that goat massacre and the barn just destroyed and thomas soon on unconscious or whatever you'd probably see the twins bloodied somewhere as well like it's just been a massacre yeah. there but no they're gone which adds to the eeriness of fuck were they were they in on it as well were they part yeah. of it as well um and yeah uh the last person left is Catherine, who basically attacks her daughter thomason um, the, this I felt a bit weird because when when William awakes from the bed and he climbs o he climbs over Catherine I think to get out of bed, we get the eeriness of Catherine's eyes suddenly opening. She she doesn't yeah. gradually wake up. She's just eyes open, yeah. and it, it's almost like it's not her. It's almost like how Caleb was in theory somewhat possessed or being controlled. Which it's oh, like okay. she I I got the impression that she was somewhat under a control as well because oh, of what right. happened the night before with the raven maybe. and no, okay, that not being killed but then but then when she goes to attack thomason it feels more legit from her point of view being that mm. she's just lost it with this she's had enough thomas she she believes thomason is evil yeah uh, for what she's done 100%. to her so I, I don't know i don't know what, how to read into all that but it was just the way she opened her eyes that's not a yeah. gradual wake up that's a the evil I, just, is now. I know what you mean. I can't. I can't say I. I pick. I saw it myself. I mean, I, I did physically see it, but I don't know if my. I didn't go that way. Yeah. With it, yeah. But I can see it. I. I, I, I can't dismiss it completely. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps mm, there's. Mm. There's something in that. Um. But you're right. Yeah. She. She throws herself at Thomas in and accuses her of being a witch. Mm. Um, she accuses her of essentially seducing her own father. I think it's somewhere in that screaming, yeah. there is a, a there is an intimation that she's yeah a a, a slut basically, and as you know, well, there's a much her father's eye, or there's there's some yeah turn of phrase like that. There's a much stronger um, relationship between uh, William and Thomason than there is obviously the mum and uh, yeah. Thomason. Um, exactly that's he's a, he, he's a lot he um, her. he's a lot more forgiving i find for what i stereotypically think families would act how families would act back in those days he's a lot more forgiving so, and yeah. understanding in his character i think he is um, i think yeah i think you're right we normally would be presented with this you know when, when people now we say puritan i think mm. it goes hand in hand with the word strict um yes and, like i expect him to whip out his belt for any yeah. any anything she says wrong or steps out of line sure and possibly even cruel or you know um but no he's not he's uh, like you say we have that scene 
that we we mentioned already, where he, he she's been accused, admittedly by his youngest children, that she's been accused of. And I suppose this this just cements how seriously they take witchcraft and oh yeah they believe anything you know, and and anything like that. Like if you're if you're youngest, you're like what those twins are like five. Your five year old kids are accusing your. <laughs> 15 16 year old daughter of being a witch and you take it 100 percent seriously to the point where you wow. sit down with your teenage daughter and go tell me true daughter you know are, are these accusations real like are you you know have i raised a witch in my house and um but he gives her that time, chance to explain before it's... you know carting her off and it's actually well, not until after that that they, they get locked up um what i wrote down related to that was the religious paranoia is utterly mad <laughs> yeah um, yeah um so we have this so yeah we have catherine fighting thomasin and uh in the in the struggle thomasin manages to reach the the sort of little horn knife <laughs> it's like a little yeah hand, i don't know what you'd call it it's some sort of well, little machete apparently type, type tool it's a bill hook apparently see I was going to say bill hook, but I've always thought a bill hook was on a longer shaft. I have no idea what a bill hook is, but I'm, lo <laughs> I'm looking it up, and apparently that's what it is. It's like, okay. It's like a little mini machete with a curve at the end. It's got a curve on it. It's got a bill. Yeah, it's a hook. For farming, right? It's for like a... Yeah, it's a it's a cutting implement. It's a knife. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a knife, isn't it? You know? It's, it's a it's big a knife. old pruning knife. Um, yeah, I always thought... A, a bill hook was on on a on a stick on a staff, but I suppose you could just get longer and shorter ones. Oh, um, oh! I I tell you why you know why you think that. You, are you from Yorkshire? I mean, I'm no, I'm from the, the other one, Lancashire. It's all up north. Other, it's all up north. Whatever. It's all up north. Are you are you close to Yorkshire? I mean, yeah, very. Right. Used by a small percentage of midland styled hedges, this is generally a two handed tool with a fourteen inch. 36 centimeters handle and 10 inch 25 centimeters blade again it has a curved front and straight back edges in some cases the handle can be up to 36 inches 91 centimeters the disadvantage of this variety of tool is its weight so nearly a meter long there you go that's where your northern mind's coming from long hand <laughs> yeah i mean they were they were used as weapons in in uh in, the, in medieval warfare as well because a lot of medieval armies were made up of peasants with farm tools basically so yeah yeah um being one of them um, she, really, she really gives her mum what for hmm. yes she does several <laughs> several chops to the face and uh mother catherine is is no no more uh thomasin picks herself up dusts herself off Heads into the house and falls asleep at the kitchen table. Um, yeah, just sort of. Uh, I couldn't remember a horror film that it reminded me of, but I, I sort of. I feel like I've seen this scene somewhere else where something absolutely drastic has happened, where um, a kill or a self defense has occurred, and it's just been crazy, bloody, and violent. And the person who defended themselves has to get up, move, sit down. And just sort of collect themselves for hours on end and then maybe even they burst into tears or scream like the emotions then erupt yeah. and it kind of felt like that where she just picked herself up got up got changed or took a, a one of her many i don't know what it is old garb off <laughs> and just sat down and sort of collected herself as to what the hell has just happened in quite a short space of time yeah yeah i mean she wakes up with like a new agenda and yeah you know the the this this final scene where she heads outside to go and speak to black philip um i love this scene is uh <laughs> is is very on her part it's very deliberate yeah and yeah, we get it, it. Even though we know all the way through that there are witches and things are real, um, it, it's still almost like a bit of a shock reveal that Black Philip can talk and is 
a, a creature is the, is the devil or you know what i mean yeah i i am sorry go on. i was just gonna say because she yeah she walks into the barn and uh and she she addresses I can't remember exactly their exact words, but she addresses Black Philip and and you get a response, you get a response, and that could have been like bam credits, you know that would have been a great sort of ending there. Just left it. Mm. Um, like I yeah, it does, it feels like a reveal. I absolutely love the transformation slash non transformation we get of Black Philip to human human mm. form to a what we know as a human uh mm -hmm. form you know um because we don't see it no we the camera is focused on thomason talking to black Pete off oh, for fuck's sake to bp off camera yes and we we hear we hear bp's um voice we actually hear the voice of bp mm -hmm. Uh, talking back and forth to Thomason, but then we just see as the camera is like like this for the viewers, mm -hmm. we just see BP coming off camera, yeah, walk behind her. I think we see just eyes, don't we? Really, it's just, you like just the, a the little bit eyes, of a little bit of shadow and beard or court beard, whatever. It almost looks like the um, it almost looked a bit like the Guy Fawkes face, yeah, the mask. Oh right, yeah, yeah. It looked. A li I'll try and find a screenshot of it, but it looked a little bit like. But he's dressed in pure black puritan garb like and i, oh, I love really? that we, so we you, you do actually yeah well, i mean I'll, I'll have to have another look at that scene yeah i mean it's only in that scene you see him and i, I like that, that it, less is more you don't want to i don't want to see a transformation of a goat turning into this this person no it's it wouldn't it would have been awful um because then after this when she ventures into the woods he's he's the goat again yeah yeah, and uh, um, I do like that phrase. Would you like to live deliciously? Yes, yeah. it's brilliant. I, do, I he also offers a, he offers a butter, the taste of butter, yeah. <laughs> or a, the taste of butter, or a new dress. Would you like I, to live deliciously? I also took away from this film the feeling that she, the whole film, really, she's looking for. She's kind of wanting somewhere to fit in and to mm. find somewhere she feels accepted and where she does at the end whether or not the final scene of her floating up with the witches she's crying or laughing but she feels a hell of a lot more accepted than she did with her own family oh i think it she's fails. laughing i think she fully... yeah because yeah um so yeah yes if she like live deliciously and see the world i think it says as well and um and then he asks if there's she sees the book um yeah which just and, appears and she's she she signs she signs a name and then yeah naked walks off into the woods and joins the coven flies into the air and uh yeah 100 percent. i took it as being um laughter she's she's fully fully invested in being a witch so that is i've just dropped a little pick of um the actor oh that's what he was dressed Dan up as oh, that's daniel cool. malik who played the the human i think it was a li i think it was a different person who did the voice because there were two people credited as black philip um daniel malik and uh can't find the other name now Richard you know i'm Ryan. really curious if there's any production notes or design work in the book relating to him hmm uh, somebody called uh, Wahab Chowdhury is also credited as Black Philip. Um, okay. But yeah, Daniel Malik was uh, played the, the him in his human form, and there is if you if you Google Black Philip human form, you do get a little picture of a tweet from Daniel Malik. Cool. Yeah. Um. You you Looking can briefly gentleman. you can briefly see him over her mm -hmm. shoulder um not full face but you see maybe like a definition of cheek uh his like mouth and nose but that's that's about it um that, that kind of ties in with what i was saying earlier about the, the light the lighting is so good on this film because mm. too many horror films they illuminate nighttime uh, to a point where it's just like they may as well show you the spotlights shining down yeah. 
they may as well show you the smoke machine turning on it's just it gets to a point where you're like okay this is ridiculous now night this isn't this does nighttime doesn't look like this the moon can be right the moon can really be bright on times and you can it can help you see a lot but yeah. this film does it so well and i think i read up that they use candlelight a lot for just lighting just lighting right. at certain points not actual lights just candlelight to really get the atmosphere um uh for the for the viewers and it, it shows because there are points where i think i had it we had it on um like to, to turn like the lights off like lamps off and lights so it was pitch black and just the tv on to really see what was going on and i like that i like that it shows how dark it truly is yeah i remember i think it's the blob the blob annoyed no, i love the blob okay the blob is an incredible film but that pissed me off so much there's a part where um God, one of the Dylans is riding his bike through the woods and it's he may as well be lit up by spotlights. Um yeah, that 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 that, that trope really bothers me in films. Um yeah. but the, the not yeah. just the lighting, the, the sound design as well in this film is very eerie. It's it uses a lot of what I like to call the witch note. Um and it's that sort of string it's like violin screechy. Yeah long drawn out um and it, it's always used in films where witchcraft is involved um or or in sort of like folky horror type of things uh which is why i like to refer to it Ooh. as the witch note but yeah it's yeah like just just constant sort of screeching of strings all the way through and it's a very horrible sound for the most part it's Good. it's quite it, it you know it gets under your skin it's that sort of nails on a chalkboard kind of thing it's uncomfortable to hear and um but yeah I, it 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 just screams witchcraft to me whenever i hear it's witchcraft <laughs> whenever i hear <laughs> yeah no. blue eyes himself <laughs> uh. <laughs> i agree i agree and the along with that the sound design pretty much gives us a lot of the jump scares with this rather than your quintessential cheesy jump scares where silently walking into a room and then yeah. this is one of the jump scares is a cut transition i don't know if you noticed it it was early on um i can't remember i think it was a the transition going from night to day but it the transition goes straight to william chopping wood and oh, yeah. it's silent and the sound the next sound you hear is dang and it kind of gets you that's a, it's a really clever jump scare it's not a scare it's not a scare in no, the no. film but it it gets you it gets you on the edge of your seat it's like, oh oh okay all right that's what's going on here it's just cutting wood all right but i'm a bit yeah. on edge now Really well, clever. It's a, a big thing because a lot, quite a lot of it is quiet. The quite a lot of the movie. Oh, is, very quiet. Is yeah. quiet, if not completely silent. The dialogue is, you know, hushed. There's a lot of hushed whispers or just two people talking to each other. Um, you know, close enough that they don't. There doesn't need to be raised voices. Everything is very, very quiet. So, yeah, any any sort of big sound is a. a, a stands out it's um it is like a, a big bold statement almost yeah um did we did we get to the end so after black after black philip the um but yeah that is the end she walks yeah. off and and joins the uh joins the coven um and has her moment sort of floating up into the sky and the final shot is her sort of i don't think she's quite christ pose but she's as high as a tree she's up she's up there um, you know uh, sort of lit lit from below by the fire and sort of yeah. hanging hovering in 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 there and then yeah that's that's the end of it um yeah fantastic Absolutely this film's fantastic incredible film. i can't believe it it's 20 it was 2015 right this came out yeah and it's it doesn't i i was shocked that it's that old because it still feels like a new film to me Yep. Even it, it, you know, every time I watch it, I still feel like, oh, this is only a year old, and it's not. It's eight. It's eight years old already. I it doesn't. I don't feel like it gets its flowers enough. I don't feel like it gets enough praise. 
or enough recognition for what it is. It doesn't, but it's this is it's the constant thing of people like crap horror <laughs> commercially. <laughs> They yeah. like the shit jump scare. Nobody's got patience. Not only, only top tier intelligent people have the patience to sit through stuff, things like this, where it's slow and methodical, and you've got to think about it a little bit. And yeah, yeah, it, it's the it's the thinking man's horror because it it's is. got a subtlety and it's a feeling, not just you know a big scary face it's an atmosphere the the yeah. film is all about atmosphere mm. it really is and it kind of goes back to what we were talking earlier about when evil lurks mm. like i haven't seen it i'm gonna i plan to see it very soon i know you haven't seen it and i don't know if you're gonna watch it but the exorcist believer i will watch it at some point yeah that's a but... big big budget blumhouse straight out into the theaters um when evil lurks not it's an argentinian film i think it's the second film from that director um i haven't seen e e exis believer but i know e when evil lurks is better that's for sure and i don't i did so many people i've recommended it to never heard of it never heard of it and these are people that you know, people in my life that say do do enjoy film are into the the film uh news circle shall we say do follow along still never heard of it friend of mine watched it last night and i got a voice message going oh my god tom the, the dog the fucking dog she it just ate the girls yeah we'll leave it at that the dog is <laughs> and i was like yep yep i mean i, I said the same to you it was like i could see, i could see it coming i knew what it's was the, gonna it's happen the dog. it's there it's there it's gonna happen <laughs> but it, it's it's still like wow the, yeah, that was great yeah I, I i remember seeing posters for the witch i think on the underground but again i don't think it got the publicity it probably deserved it didn't get the it didn't get the rocket behind it that most big studio horrors nowadays get um yeah. similar to barbarian last year barbarian was on i think disney plus because of fox probably i don't think it was affiliated with disney i think it was related affiliated with one of disney's sub companies that they own everything I think it's still on Disney Plus. I'll have a look. But that is the only place I believe you can watch it. There is still no physical release for it. Mm -hmm. um, there is a game apparently in the works for it. How is there a game and not even a DVD or Blu-ray for that? Really? Um, how can you do a game out of Barbarian? It doesn't make any sense. It's going. It's going to be. It's going to be crawling around in the dark underground with the torch, isn't it? Oh god, yeah, it's going to be awful. It's going to be alien isolation with with the the mother creature, um, basically. But as I, I've stated before, that was my film of last year. And yeah, it's still on Disney Plus. Okay. The only way you can see it. Go 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 watch Baby's Day Out and then watch Disney uh, Barbarian after. Um for a nice little uh and then maybe a little bit of dessert with Home Alone 4. There you go. Lovely. Oh, the good Home Alone. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, the good one. Um Yeah, uh the witch. Can't say enough good things about it. Well, what are we looking at with scores around the board for it's The Witch? The Witch and New England Folktale. I wasn't aware that this had um, a, a subtitle, but it does keep coming up. Really? Does it? Uh, yeah. It, oh, God, it it's does... right there. It's a New England Folktale, yeah. Okay, that's it's not awful. It's not the worst subtitle I've ever seen on a horror film. It, it kind of makes it feel like it's a different film. Like yeah. It's not a, like, it's, like it is a a documentary which is definitely not in that style or anything like that um so we're, we're rocking a 7.10 7, 7 7.10 7 out of 10 on imdb that's fair i could probably 3. go higher three on amazon i feel like that's low oh i amazon amazon reviews and amazon star ratings are the one of the ones i rarely believe because there are some dog shit films on amazon that half the time they're four stars four stars four stars yeah now now Nine percent um, on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, oh, that's very good. Four point one out of five on Amazon UK. There we go. There we go. The the real uh, Puritans know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Guardian it, gave it. Mm. Um, I don't know what the Guardian gave it. That's not actually a review. But yeah, Rotten I Tomatoes. Mean, well. Rotten Tomatoes showing the problem with modern horror, though. 
The Witch, 90, 90% tomato meter, 60% audience score. Mm, yeah. That's that's a good example of kind of what we were just talking about. It's it, That's what it is. It's not for everybody because mm. it's not for everybody. Mm. I get that. I appreciate it. No. But it happens to be like, right, this sort of thing is right up my street. It's exactly what um, what I like in a horror movie. And um, there we go again. When Evil Lurks, 99% tomato meter, 57% audience score. So, yeah, let's go with let's go with Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, let's go with what the kids <laughs> love. Let's go with what the kids want. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's, boring looking film. That is probably one I'll skip for the wrap up of the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Thirty percent tomato score, eighty-seven percent audience score. Says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> it Says does. it all. But anyway, we can't rely on we can't base our opinions all on online reviews. You have to try these films out for yourselves. And the Do reason you have to try the, these things for yourself. And opinions you can trust are the likes of uh -huh and uh -huh. <laughs> and um 100%. This was actually I put I, I when I did my top thirty one horror films of all time for the month of October, I had the witch at number twenty six. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, I love it. I think you, I think it's fantastic. Are you regretting that now? Do you think it needs to be higher? Or No, because after this I've got Suspiria, which is a superior witch film, in my opinion. Okay. In my opinion. Um have we got any other witch films related after that? Um I mean, The Witches? Hold on. No. Great effects, but no. <laughs> um, no, no other witch style films after that. Oh, Blair Witch. That's number six for me. Blair Witch. Um that's we, a different kettle of fish. We did talk about Haxon, didn't we? Not that long ago. Or it was mentioned. Oh, I believe you did, yes. The, um, the nineteen twenty two Swedish documentary about witches yeah yeah uh what was it called again exactly uh, uh it's hacks haxan 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 it's ha with an umlaut uh xan oh man the iconography of this film the visual it is a good watch oh I, yeah I very much enjoyed it i think yeah i think i found this one point that sent it to you and you were like yeah I, I've, I've checked this out before yeah, I was like, this film, this looks mad. Yeah, we need to do something with this. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, the the oh wow. Oh god, even what looks like the um DVD slash yeah the Blu-ray, very similar sort of designs to what we see at the witch. So it's all very similar, isn't it? The mm -hmm. it's always the goat head. It's always the the star. Yeah. Well, they. I mean, that is a. That is a documentary. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, just looking at it. Just, well, a silent horror essay film. I think it's split into sort of 10, uh, 10 chapters or something. And it yeah. looks at various aspects of, um, of, of witchcraft through the ages. Um, ha I think the word Haxan does mean the witch in Swedish. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's it's witchcraft through the ages, but I guess up to 1922. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun watch. There is a, there's a, a, a fun bit with the devil coming to visit, um, and it shows corruption of the clergy. And there's lots of, you know, it, it's sort of like those old kind of woodcuts brought to life. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a fun it's a fun watch. Do you remember a, a, another film we checked out that uh, has a lot of um, witch devil? aspects throughout um, it and goat and goat big big me metal goat um oh i do, yes, <laughs> I do indeed. yes that is not so good no don't, don't watch that watch the witch watch the witch in watch fact the witch. have a have a triple triple bill of eggers eggers features um the witch the lighthouse and northman you know yeah i'm gonna see where i can watch the lighthouse because i ought to uh, i ought to watch that i think you should i really think you should yeah um 
The Witch, I would definitely say, is his most horror film. Mm -hmm. The Lighthouse is horror, but I would say in a very uncanny way. Um, very, very, very different way. The, the Northman is obviously what you've seen it as more. I've seen it's, it. it's a Viking action film. In a way. It's a Viking action movie yeah. with some folk horror elements, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, well, yes, most definitely. Which I wasn't, which I weren't expecting, to be honest. I wasn't expecting any of that to, to crop up, so. Oh, it's also Hamlet, um, right? Is it Hamlet? It's based on uh, the Shakespeare. Oh, I don't know. Um, well, his um. Oh, it's one of them. Uh, the Northman Shakespeare. Uh, Shakespeare. I mean, it may well be Hamlet. Yeah, it's usually it usually is Hamlet because yeah, everything's Hamlet, isn't it? The, the, the old yeah, old Lion King. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, apparently there's a film called Zombie Hamlet. Oh, 2012. Okay. Jason Mewes? It's a Jason Mewes movie. We may have to uh, what? turn that down. What this have... Episode. What wormhole have I come down now? Zombie oh. Hamlet. Oh, It's got what? Hulk Hogan as a vampire in it. <laughs> I believe... <laughs> what am I looking at? Jason Muse. Shelley Long. Yeah, okay. We might have okay, to. Okay, okay, yeah. We'll... I'll <laughs> have a little look into that in the future. Um, <laughs> I had one other little thing, just one little random note. I thought it was quite iconic. I thought it was quite ironic, not iconic. Okay. <laughs> one of the producers for this film was one Chris Columbus. Oh, right. Okay. I felt that was quite fitting with the Puritan going from England to the new yeah. land. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was it. That was my last point. That was my last two no, cents. I like on the film. <laughs> that's, that's, that's two cents well spent there, Tom. <laughs> You'll never get that time back, folks. You'll never get it back. <laughs> if you stayed this far, <laughs> if you I bet... Stay... You're incredibly treat. pleased by that little that little, that little treat. <laughs> what a treat! <laughs> um, yes, folks, go watch The Witch. Can't, oh, we yeah. we both can't recommend it enough. No, it's, absolutely. Um, it's I, I've watched it several times now, and it's still I, I, it doesn't get that you know it doesn't get worse. It doesn't it doesn't get bad. To me, like this it. is probably the best film we've done. In my opinion, since Return of the Living Dead, I, okay. I, I adore I adore Return of the Living Dead. Then it was The Exorcist. Then so, The Exorcist was before Return of the Living Dead. But after that, we did Next Gen, Texas Chainsaw Next Generation, yeah. Invisible Man, Final, Final Destination One. Okay, Saw Ten, Idle Hands, Halloween Six, Kill List. Yeah, fair enough. The Witch. We're back to this is a good. So don't expect any more good films for oh, a while. No, 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 no. Well, you say that next week we will be heading back to finally to our Monsters of Universal uh, series. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Uh, mm -hmm. It was beginning of October, first of October, is, where yeah, the Invisible Man released. So, yep, yeah, part five: uh, the Bride of Bride Frankenstein. Of so back with forward Boris to that. Karloff. And I plan to get a viewing in next week for the final episode of November for Thanksgiving. Eli oh, Roth's yes. Thanksgiving. Looking to get a uh, viewing either next Friday or Saturday. Um, looking forward to that because I'm going in with... It's an Eli Roth film, okay? It's not going to be well... It's not going to be a Robert Eggers film, okay? It's no. not going to be that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be shit at points. There's going to be a lot of bad writing. There's probably going to be some good good effects, some good kills. And I'm looking for some fun with it, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to start getting some. Let's see that. Because I, think that's, I don't think that's showing in our local hmm. cinema. So that's going to be one I have to travel, okay. travel for. But By ho horse and cart. By horse and cart. <laughs> um, <laughs> With my trusty bell hook. Oh, and, with your bell hook, yeah. <laughs> and my my faithful black goat, Philip. Um, yeah. And on that note. <laughs> oh, uh, 
Have you picked any Christmas films yet? I'm still looking. You're still pondering. I, okay, all right. I have some in mind. Remember, folks, if, again, if you've made it this far through the, the podcast, well done and thank you. But December is all Christmas horror films for the whole month until our 2023 wrap up at the end of the month. So, yes, stay tuned for what's coming up uh, in December. Christmas horror related. Some good, some downright ugly. Um, and you can find out all this information on the Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and the TikTok, which is the underscore oh, yeah. dreadcast, where t- the TikTok is me posting clips from each episode. Um, We've gone trendy. We are. We're going very trendy. That's what the kids use these days, I believe. The tick of talk. Um, so yeah, find us there, and you can find this podcast and all past content on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Podbean by searching the Dreadcast. And That's you it. can send us an email on the Dreadcast Podcast at gmail dot com. And until next time, folks. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm checking. There may have been an email during that time. There may have been an email. There was not. There was not an email. (laughs) Well, without further ado, there's only one thing left to say, and that is stay spooky. Thou stay thy spooky. How thou stay spooketh. Stayeth thy spook. Stayeth thy spooketh.